It is so hot. It's like a hundred plus degrees out here. I am not even joking. You can hear the heat in the Katy Dids. It is so hot. And I'm telling you, the humans aren't the only ones who suffer. The garden is suffering. Chickens are suffering. The donkeys aren't suffering. They never suffer. We don't let them suffer. But it is, it's rough. It's really rough on, on you know, a small farm like this to experience this heat. So today, we're going to go ahead and do that garden update. But I'm also going to throw in a few tips on how to help keep your flock cool and to cope with the heat. Some signs to look out for in the garden and just some tips on keeping yourself cool in the meantime. So stay tuned. Here we go. Let's start off in the pumpkin garden. The reason I wanted to start off here is because this is the most obvious plant showing signs of some heat stress. So basically, a plant can handle the heat as much as it needs to as long as it's got enough water. But you can tell when it's starting to struggle when these leaves kind of do this droopy thing. See, pumpkin leaves should be nice and flat and kind of spread out. I'm trying to find a good example here. This one's not struggling too bad, kind of like that. And they get really, really big. I've actually got a couple of pumpkins ready to harvest in here. We're gonna come in and get them. But also this yellowing, that can be a sign of damage to the stalks. It could be a sign of insects, but right now I'm pretty sure it's a sign of water lacking. The, the water is just evaporating off. We've got soaker hoses running through you can see right in there but when I poke my finger down in there is just barely any water in the ground and they are just getting cooked now the good thing about pumpkin is they do take spells they'll kind of droop a little bit and then they'll come back and then they'll droop a little bit and then come back this particular breed is a breed we've been working on ourselves we call them the whites and pinks and this one is actually ready to harvest right there that is a cute pumpkin oh my gosh that's adorable and it looks like I've got a smaller one over here. It's in there, I swear. Where's it? There it is. That one's just about ready. It's a smaller one. But it looks like this just definitely needs some water. And we got one over there hanging. I don't know if you can see it either but so we've got a few pumpkins we've actually managed to pull off quite a bit clear sign that your garden is getting plenty of heat and that you might incorporate some shade is by having some chocolate mint chocolate mint actually bolts once it gets hot enough just the weed here there we go but it makes these beautiful flowers you should smell it right now it's just just beautiful mint smell i love the way it smells and you can clip those flowers off or you can just let them bloom and drop down. They are great pollen attractors. You can see a bee's over here buzzing this one right now. Happy little bumblebee. So that'll, that's great. And I've got tons of buds and little bitty sprouts all over the pumpkin. So they'll climb where they can. And if they can't, they'll sprawl. This is actually only about 10 pumpkin plants. All right, I've got some little cherry tomatoes in here and over here. Oh, tricks for coping with heat and water. A, you don't want to water during the heat of the day when the sun's shining down. You want to make sure that you are watering when it's nice and cool. That's in the morning times or in the evening times. That's, that's your best bet. You don't want to spray the leaves if you can either. Spraying the leaves, the water kind of acts like little microscopic magnifying glasses on your pump, on your leaves, and it really just boils the plants all together. And, and kind of the same for the fruit. You're really just asking to boil your fruit. So water early in the morning or in the evening, and try to water ground level instead of spray water. a lot getting those three pumpkins out of there taking a break 
one of the best ways to cope with the heat is to have a lot of trees on your property. So if you don't have a lot, don't be afraid to plant them. I know it takes a long time for them to get up big and make a good shade tree, but if you don't start now, you'll never get there. So, And speaking of shady spots, it's another great way to cope with the, the, the heat for your plants. If you've got plants that you know are going to be sun sensitive, you can plant them under things, natural things like trees or along the side of a house so that they get shade in the afternoon or evening. Great ways to cope with heat. Let's look at some more plants. Looking good. We've got oh, maybe one or two per tub. And you can see they're starting to get pretty good size. That one's almost ready to harvest there. And we've got the same soaker hoses on them. Not all of the wicking bags, these, these bags did good. I'm, I'm really actually kind of disappointed in them. Um, I just don't think they got enough water. The, the dirt packed down. I think it's not quite the right mixture yet. But we did get some progress out of production out of them. Not a total flop. Our okra, bada boom. It is doing fabulous. We're keeping up with the weeds pretty good. Our cabbage, and, I'm sorry, our broccoli and cauliflower are still alive, but yeah, they kind of look like doilies at this point from the worms. So yeah, this one's actually did better than the others. It's pretty. We've got some tomatoes coming up. That's Cherokee purple there. Looks like we had a volunteer basil. I did not plant that. <laughs> more Cherokee purple tomatoes. We got lots of blooms. I'm loving all the blooms. These are our black cherry. And we've got a couple starting to darken up. Not quite ready yet. Lots and lots on the vine though. And then we got our okra. Oh, I should have grabbed my scissors. Hang on. All right, looks like we've actually got some okra ready to harvest. So let's go ahead and look at those. We've got right over here. That little guy is pretty much ready, and then that big one right there is ready for sure. Looks great. Looks beautiful. We ended up with 55 okra plants all together. So that's one type right there, these beautiful ones. I love these with the red stalks and all. They're just beautiful plants. They make gorgeous flowers, very productive. Seem to be really heat tolerant, too. Even the small ones are producing. And then the other kind we have are over here. Let me get close to one of those so you can see those. And these are the, the okra like you're used to see it in the store. Just green. And they've got a green stalk. And see, that's definitely ready. That's about as big as you want it to get right there. And I've got little hands, but just so you can see. And yeah, that one's that. So lots of okra about to come off of here too. We do that and I'll show you today's harvest of okra. And it looks like these everything's just struggling. It's so hot. And we've got some cherry tomatoes over there. Yay, look at how cute those are. I love the pear tomatoes. I didn't get these staked up in time and they were just determined to be a ground level plant. But there they are. Plenty of okra. These are volunteers. I didn't plant these. I did try to stake it. See, I tried. I tried. Sometimes the plants do what they want. Yeah, everything's just struggling for water and hot. And that includes me. Like, about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it's hot. It's over 100 degrees. I'll look and check to see what the heat index is here. My phone's even getting hot. Alright, I'm going to get these harvested and then we'll go check out the the covered area, which is a little bit better prepared for the heat. There you go. Okra, pretty okra. I love the different colors and the textures. Excuse me if I take a minute and then we'll head on to the next part of the garden. We made it out to the garden area. I got that far. This heat will drain the energy out of you. And if you are stuck out in it you need to be sure to hydrate very very well and take advantage of any shade you can let's go ahead and look at these beans so i can get into the shaded part of this garden Alrighty. so if you'll remember most of our beans that we planted on this row 
our bush beans. These here on the end are pinto beans. I actually just harvested a lot of this stuff, so I don't expect there to be a whole, whole lot. Might be, these are golden wax beans right here. And you can see they've still got just a little bit of a yellowy tinge, but they're a nice, nice yellow, honestly, but you don't want that greenish tinge. So I'm gonna leave these just one more day. Those will be ready tomorrow. I'm hoping maybe I had some to show you that were ready now that's a little green that's still a little green all of these are still just a little on yeah a little on the green side sorry about that i tried all right golden wax beans and over here in these this is provider bush and again i just harvested these yesterday i did not leave a whole lot left on there we're struggling with the heat you can kind of expect during the heat of the summer that all your production chickens eggs veggies everything will slow down and really your goal at that point is to just get it through these here on the end are Kentucky Wonder Bush so you see they're still alive they're getting enough Sun they're getting enough the right kind of light they're getting the right kind of water that they're surviving it's just everything slowing down production we were getting about a, oh gosh, I don't know, a half bushel a day. All right. And right here are our zucchini. Again, just trying to keep them alive until fall. We've narrowed it down to one, maybe two, about two per tub. These are called Royal Burgundy Garden Beans. They make just these really pretty purpley beans like that. But they get big, so these are not even close to ready, honestly. Here's our yellow squash. Right in here. It looks like I've got one. It's small. Remember, these got hit with wet feet during the rain. And now, they're trying to recover. But that's actually a really good little squash right there. Small but just the right color and everything. So the squash, still got lots of flowers on there. They are not a determinate plant. So once, you know, if they, if they have problems, sorry about this, I got an ant in my shoe. <laughs> if they have problems and you end up having to take them out or cull them, just cut off the dead stuff, narrow it down to the healthiest plants, tie them up, and they'll usually come back pretty strong. Uh, it's just getting them past whatever the shock is that they've been struggling with. So, these are our pole beans. They're sad right now. Everything's struggling with the heat. Pole beans don't mind a lot of sun, but they don't like a lot of water. And these got wet feet, and then just about the time they were starting to recover, we got the summer and hit heat in. So, but we've still got some baby leaves coming up on them here and there so I've still got hope and it's still putting off beans just they haven't gotten very big yet these are our black eyes they are almost like that is there we're gonna come through and harvest a lot of black eye peas today black eye beans those look good see they get this these huge green pods like this and then they turn brown yellow and kind of dry up and then they're ready to harvest you got beans at least that's what I read it's my first time growing them so I'm kind of excited I got any at all all right shade okay we're in the uh, shade cloth area now thank god not any too soon I'm telling you um so if you're wondering what difference does a shade cloth make in your garden like how much of a difference does it make what difference does it make I I can tell you about 15 degrees, <laughs> which right now is a blessing. It went from about 110 down to about 95, which is still a struggle for the plants. Um, the, of course, the thicker your shade cloth, the finer mesh it is, the less sun it lets through. But again, you want your plants to get some sunlight, so you don't want to cut it off altogether. But it makes not only a difference in how much sun is beating down directly on the plants, but it actually reduces the surrounding air temperature so you have less early ripening than you would otherwise um so let's actually quit listening to me jammer and look at some plants again 
So first time growing loofah. I'm really excited about this. It took off. It's actually grown through this hole here and is like in between the layers. See, it's not on the outside. It's in between the layers. That was interesting. I thought that was interesting. And then over here are yellow tomatoes. Pear tomatoes are still got just a ton on them. Nothing's really ripening yet. We've had a couple ripen, but everything looks really good otherwise. We've got more Cherokee purple coming up really good right in here and all the way down. And our Max Pack cucumbers. This is actually the reason I'm out here. You've got to check cucumbers every day. Cucumbers and acorn squash. I've got one little bitty acorn squash. I'm just waiting on it to start turning orange. -y color. I've actually gotten more pippin squash than acorn squash. I don't know if I'm going to do the squash in the tubs again. Our moth trap, you can see, traps a lot more than just moths, but it's working really good. Here, these here are uh, different. These are the Chicago pickling cucumbers. So you want to harvest them when there's, you know, small pickling size. And I don't have any on there. I got one. I got one. Yay! So we'll get that. And then over here, these are market more. I had left this on thinking it might get longer, but it's starting to turn yellow, so I need to get it off. And market more or a slicer cucumber. So it looks like I'm going to have several small slicers to come over here and harvest. And my Pippin squash is struggling. I got a little bitty one right there. But they do get bigger than that. They get to be about three times that size. So there's our pickler. So you can see we've got just a lot going on. Now we get down here, it gets a little more exciting. Let's see how our romas are doing. We've got a ton of romas that came up and they're starting to put off fruit now. <gasps> and it looks, please don't be, uh. All right, this is blossom end rot. Same problem we had with the squash. It's a calcium deficiency. I know this because the ground, chickens are gonna love it. The ground, is kind of dryish. These do not have wet feet. It's it's got water in it, but you got to like go down a little bit to get to that water. So it's not too dry, but it's not too wet either. So that's not what's causing the problem. It's definitely a calcium and magnesium deficiency. So we're going to put more calcium in. This was our first run with these tubs. So we weren't exactly these are our bell peppers. We got some more coming up over there. You can see I've got flowers little flowers little flowers so we're just that's a baby bell right there that'll become a pepper soon so we're getting fruit and stuff it's just slow come fall all of this is going to pick right back up we just got to keep it alive till then not going to be doing another garden update for a while but before we leave for today i want to talk about another aspect of farm life that gets just way too hot let me go harvest these cucumbers before I forget they exist. So it's not just the plants and it's not just the people that got to cope with the heat, but I've come to the front porch to show you some babies and what we're dealing with with them as well. So right here you can see these are some Easter egg or babies. They're about five weeks old now, maybe six at the most. And you can see how they're panting. See how they just open their mouth and just breathe really, really heavy. And that's a clear sign that your babies are hot. Here's the good news. It won't actually kill your chickens to put them out in the heat. In fact, this time of year when you've got 100 degree temperatures, save the electricity, forget running the brooder lights, just put them on the porch. You still need to make sure that they've got lots of airflow and good circulation and plenty of good clean water. When you've got your babies outside, it's also a good idea to hang the feeders. It keeps them from making quite such a mess. Babies will pant just like adults or dogs. That's how you can tell if they're hot. These are some little Americanas that we've got. They're about nine weeks old now. They're super cute. These are wheat and it's a, a boy is the dark one and he is a blue wheat and splash. And then the two girls, I believe one of them is a splash and one of them is just a blue wheat. And he's gonna be a really good rooster too. Beautiful babies. We are gonna be visiting the farm 
that I got these, the breeder that I got these from, uh, this weekend, and I'll be taking video of that. So that's something that you get to look forward to, and we'll see some babies. Okay, so that's babies. It's okay to put hatchlings outside in 100 degree temperatures, especially when it's nice and humid like it is now. Just make sure they've got good airflow and and some shade and and that they're not being like direct sun cooked so let's look at the big birds and see some things that you can do to help keep your big flock your 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 adult flock cool through the temperatures and help them get through it it's evening time and the girls have already started to kind of put themselves up so i wanted to come out here and just really briefly talk about some of the different things that you could do to help keep your chickens cool and get through the heat of the summer so first off you'll notice right here I don't know how well you can see it in the picture, but this is just a big old hole. It's really sandy dirt and it's in shade. You can see where they've just dug all of that up. Chickens will actually dig in the sand under the shade and then lay in it. You can see Elvira over there and she's kind of laying in it. Oh, hi everybody. Lots of everybody's right there. You want to provide lots of shade. Shade is your primary thing. Open shade where there's lots of good airflow is your best bet. If you don't have like a really big open shady place, you can put up shade fans and blow the air, kind of circulation fans, blow the air around that way. And you can even put a bucket of ice um, in front of it and it'll act as kind of an all natural little uh, uh, AC for them. Another trick that you could do is to provide a shallow wading pool. This one actually has just a little bit too much water. You want it to be about halfway up their legs. We're gonna have to dump some of that water out. Now, water, speaking of the waterers, for every gallon of water, add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. The apple cider vinegar has electrolytes in it and it's kind of like Gatorade for chickens. It really helps out a lot. If that's not enough, you can always buy treats for them that are high in water and vitamin C, like watermelon or honeydew. Any of those kind of fruits are just high in water. Um, chickens will dig, they will find shade if it's available. Uh, they can pretty much acclimate to the temperatures on their own. You don't have to like babysit and micromanage the temperatures on their own. Um, they'll they'll pretty much take care of themselves. So we've got the chicken train here. Um, we've got a pool. This box here actually can provide extra shelter if we open it up. And then we've got good shade trees that provide just a little bit of filter light to get through, but for the most part shades it off. And you see the adult birds, they're panting too, just like those babies were. It's one way that you know that they're hot. Some breeds are more susceptible to heat than others and as I do the breed highlights I'll talk about whether or not they're susceptible to heat. Um, chickens lose heat through their combs and through their feet and uh, is, and that's but uh, some breeds uh, like the turkin they don't have all the feathers and stuff around their their necks so it actually makes them a little bit less heat prone but more sun prone so you've got to kind of find balance they can tolerate the heat but they've got to have shade from the sun but then you've got other babies like this poor little easter egg or here you see all of that those feathers on its face and everything and, and around the comb the more feathers generally speaking there are around combs the, the harder they have of dispersing with heat um, and then feathers around the legs also insulate the legs and help and, and uh, make it harder for them to reduce their, their body temperature. So anyway, so it's been a busy day. We've talked about how to get through the heat today. Uh, be sure to hydrate yourself. Wear loose, breathable clothing when you're out working in the heat. Take lots of frequent breaks and take advantage of shade if you can. Uh, water your plants in the morning times or in the later evening times so if they're not getting cooked and try to ground water so you're not spraying water on the leaves which can like boil the plants as for chickens apple cider vinegar shade 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 watermelon is great a sand pit good dry sand pit to dig in shallow pool to wade through helps and uh 
Yeah. Lots of prayer. That's, that's a big deal too. Lots of prayer. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I need all the feedback I can get. So let me know if you've got other suggestions. Is there other stuff that you've tried to help your garden and help your, your flock of birds get through the summer? What worked for you? What didn't work for you? Let me know. Type it down right here on YouTube. Just post it. Only take a second and I swear I'm going to get to it. I always respond and reply to every comment that I get. Uh, oh, 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 don't forget. We are going to be building that guardian coop pretty soon. So we've got a coop build coming up and we are going to do a breed highlight when we visit Blackwood Farms uh, with Miss Sharon and we're going to look at all of the wonderful animals she's got there and look at Americanas and Easter Eggers and what the difference is. So be sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss it because in case you didn't notice already, I'm not great about keeping a posting schedule so I do my best so but if you really want to get it first and not have to wait for it to pop up on your feed you've got to hit that notification bell share this video if you found it useful so many people don't share because they think oh this is simple information everybody's got it you might have it but there's somebody out there who's just getting started who is counting on you to share the right information at the right time so share the video Share the information. Spread the word. Spread Let the, the world word. know. Thanks for joining me, y'all. It was a blast showing you all this. I hope you're having a great day. And uh, till next time.